tell what is Six Sigma. So I said that in three different perspectives, we can tell what is Six Sigma. What are the three perspectives? Uh, it can be uh, defined as the capability and uh, very good very good capability measure of capability what is if it is if you say six sigma as a measure of process capability what is that average uh, uh, accuracy uh, it, yeah. is also, it is also a measure of accuracy or repeatability of the experience yeah when you say so measure of capability isn't it so when you take measure of capability you can measure the capability in two ways one is doing good uh, things good that means accuracy and the other one defects so when you say the accuracy with six sigma capital process will have an accuracy of three in a million defects uh -huh. well, that is dpm uh, but this one 99 point how much uh percentage, isn't it yes. so in other words if you convert this into a million this much uh, right so how much defective? So in a million, 99.9966 percent right means 3.4 defects in a million. Defects per million opportunities. Okay, this is one way. Hmm? And uh, what is the other perspective that we can say six sigma? What is six sigma? Uh, it is a problem solving uh, methodology. Very good. Problem solving is a methodology. Problem solving methodology. Good. And then we can also say it is set of tools, six sigma set of tools and a data uh, intensive strategy of problem solving, etc. So these two things you can say. Okay. Right. Good. Now, when you say the problem solving methodology, what is that methodology called? DMAC. DMAC. So there is some other methodology also. What is that other methodology? It's called DFSS. Okay. DFSS means design for Six Sigma. Now this methodology used for problem solving. Solving the problems in existing processes, product, whatever it may be, systems, etc. And this is used this methodology can be used when you are designing something new, new product, new process, new system. Everywhere you can, if you want, you can go for DFSS methodology. But commonly, we are most commonly used methodology is DMIC problem solving methodology. DMIC methodology is uh, known as what? What is uh, what does it stand for? DMIC. Define analyze. Define measure. Analyze. Define measure. Analyze, improve, improve and, control. and control, isn't it? Yes. So this is the methodology for taking Six Sigma projects, isn't it? So we also learned project and operations difference between project and operations. I also said that project is uh, project is growth. Actually, if you really want to grow in your career, you should focus more on projects, not not only operations operations there are so many people who can do the operations so many people are there to you know do this day-to-day -day activity but only very less people are there who's capable of identifying opportunity identifying a project complete a project etc so six sigma projects are done in a phase called the mic a phase or methodology whatever we call it's called this is a methodology or steps to identify a project and complete a project okay now we also learned what are the things we do in a defined phase what are the things we do in a defined phase we will try to identify an opportunity isn't it opportunity for improvement and then what is the most important part in defined phase we learned some statement you remember Problem and mission statement. Yes, problem and a mission statement. So when you make problem and mission statement, again, let me tell you that next Sunday, <coughs> if possible, I'll create a WhatsApp group and next Sunday we will use to do a, you know, uh, you know we have uh, how many people, around 60 people used to be here. We will divide into some uh, six teams, 10 people each. 
and I will give a scenario. We will identify how to make a problem statement, how to make a mission statement, and then we can do one or two uh, you know, tools in that. So, so that with team wise, we will do it. Okay. So let's see if possible. I will send that Zoom link and I will send uh, let us will not uh, meet in uh, Google, we'll meet in Zoom. I'll send that in a WhatsApp group. We'll try to create a WhatsApp group also. I'll send it in that, and then we will try to do in that so that we can split into different team and then we can practically try to take it. Okay. I'll try my best for that. So problem statement and mission statement, and then what is that team? Isn't it? And then we have schedule, uh, CPOC, etc. So all these things are in the defined phase. And once we identify a problem, an opportunity for improvement, and then we are getting, we get the approval also from our top management, formal approval, okay, go ahead with this project. This project is strategically aligned with the company's objective. Now go ahead with this. Now you try to solve this problem. Let's try to you know, uh, identify this opportunity and uh, let us have this opportunity of improvement. And then the team, will now move to measure phase. And in the measure phase, what are the things we learned? What is the first thing that we did in measure phase? Process flowchart. Yes, process flowchart, good. And from the process, process flowchart, we find out Two things. What are the two things? CDP. CDP. Good. CDP and CDP. Now we call CDP. What are the names that we call for CDP? Critical to quality. Yes, critical to quality. Oh, why? Critical names? to quality. That is why. And then, what is the other name? Dependent. 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 Variable. Okay, so if you call it as CTQ, if you call it as Y, if you call it as dependent variable, everything is same. It is all output, isn't it? Specific attached output specifications. Okay, why I am telling you all this name? All these names will come in different, different. Uh, places when you are going doing regression, it will be asked for X and Y, and when you are going for uh, uh, ANOVA, it will ask response and factor. We will also learn in response and factor later. There is one more word called response for Y and for X. X is input, inputs X, and uh, what is the other one? If it is dependent variable, that we have dependent variable. And uh, Y is response, X is called factors. Especially in DOE, we learned this, all these words. Okay. So uh, I'm repeating this, all this for uh, the same reason because it will be coming in when you do Minitab. Minitab, we are not practicing it, just uh, I will show that. So all these things will come. Somewhere it will ask response, somewhere it will ask factors. Somewhere at many times we'll ask independent variable, dependent variable. Somewhere it will be asked y and x, etc. Mm -hmm. So you should be very clear that what is CTQ? CTQ is output. There are many other words for CTQs and CTPs, etc. And then in the basic statistics, we have learned what are the things we learned in basic statistics. Simple, we learned what are the two branches of statistics? Descriptive inferential. Descriptive and inferential, isn't it? Descriptive and inferential. See, I was talking about exit poll that day. Do, do you remember or not? I was talking about exit poll. And if you remember on uh, seventh, I think the last phase completed and seventh itself, the exit poll came. And the exit poll predicted. Yes, in Punjab, Aam Aadmi Party will come. And then the UP, PJP again will come. Exit poll predicted or not? And almost similar uh, seats, what is predicted by an exit poll. It comes as true or not. So exit poll is what? Inferential statistics. Now, how do you do inferential statistics? First, you will collect a survey and they will take some descriptive statistics. From the descriptive statistics, you predict it. 
Now the prediction, you cannot predict at the person. You can only give a range of predictions, range of values. So in the descriptive statistics, what are the things we learned? Mean, standard deviation, variance. Isn't it? And uh, I have given some other names also. What is this SS? Sum of squares. Sum of squares, isn't it? Sum of squares means square sum of version of x minus x bar all square. We can call it as sum of square. And if you divide this into df, what is df? Degree of freedom. Degree of freedom, what is degree of freedom? DF is equal to? Two just a minute. I have a call. Just let me take a call. Please excuse. Just a Sorry, it was an important call. Okay. Right. Uh, so, what are the things we learned in that? Uh, uh, yes, SS means sum of square, isn't it? So, sum of square is nothing but x minus x bar all square. This is one step to find out the standard deviation. And then, if you divide it by df, what will you, what is it? Is it variance or not? Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. So, is this variance or not? Degree of freedom is equal to n minus 1. So, what is the formula for variance? Variance, formula for variance is summation of x minus x bar all square divided by n minus 1. This is a very, this is a um, uh, equation for variance. Now this we call it as sum of square. So this we call it as degree of freedom. So if you uh, sum of square divided by degree of freedom, that is variance. And we also call this variance as what? Mean squares. Mean square. Now why I'm giving this? This is not a general term. This is just terminology used in ANOVA. In ANOVA we have this sum of square, mean square, etc. 
But actually, most of the people get confused in ANAVA. Some of them want to, actually, let me tell you, ANAVA and all is not a low belt part. A low belt is just a simple Pareto and all, but I am covering more than a low belt for you. So these are all ANAVA terms. ANAVA. ANAVA is a black belt. My black belt. So ANAVA, sum of square, mean square, all these things are. So when, when I am, I will explain you some ANAVA tables that time, you will understand this variance is also called as sum of the mean square. You know, this we call it as sum of square, degree of freedom, etc. These terms will come in ANOVA. Hmm? So these were all basic statistics. And then we have explained, we have tried to learn basic statistics with the help of height of the participants, isn't it? Height of participants, with the height of participants, mean and standard deviation and variance. Uh, I have explained you and then I have shown you in mini tab how a normal distribution, histogram looks like. When a histogram will take a shape of this bell curve, what is it called? Which distribution? What is this curve called? If an histogram take a shape like this. Sir, normal distribution. Normal distribution. Normal distribution. Yes, we call it as normal distribution. Now, normal distribution is very, very important distribution in an in a Six Sigma project. And there are a lot of distributions, probability distribution. Normal distribution is most important distribution. There are how many types of data? What are the two types of data? Continuous. Continuous. And discrete. Isn't it? Now, there are many probability distribution for continuous data, and there are many probability distribution for discrete data. So, continuous probability distributions are normal distribution, F distribution, chi square distribution, student t distribution, etc. Now, in discrete distribution, you have binomial, poison, etc. Now, every distribution, you need to, there, there are certain parameters that describes a distribution. So, for normal distribution, the two things that describe a normal distribution is mean and standard deviation. In F distribution, the two things that is deter, uh, determining the parameter, uh, the parameters that determines the particular distribution is Degree of freedom of numerator, degree of freedom of denominator, two things. In chi-square, if you know the degree of freedom, you can describe about a chi-square distribution. In student distribution, again, degree of freedom. So every distribution, there are two parameters that determines that distribution. So normal distribution, it's mean and standard deviation. And degree of uh, freedom, it's uh, distribution, it's degree of freedom. And chi square distribution is degree of freedom, and student tree distribution is degree of freedom. Binomial distributions, there are two things one is called the number of trials n and the probability n and p. Poison distribution is the mean. So these are the different distributions and the, um, uh, the parameters, means what is the parameters that determine that the different distributions. So that we will cover later in uh, green and black if you are interested that I will do. But normal distribution we should know, normal distribution. Normal distribution and what are the two parameters that describes a normal distribution? Mean and standard deviation. Yes, mean and standard deviation. Now let's see how we can understand the normal distribution. So before that, let me see how then when you do a histogram of a particular data. So histogram can be, I think you all know about histogram. I need to tell, I don't need to tell it again. So when you do an histogram of a particular set of data, so histogram can take different shapes. So if you get such kind of shape, it is a, it's a just a ideal situation. You will not never get like this. Except if you have 1 million data, etc., that time you can have this perfect distribution. 
but a distribution can take anything like this any 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 uh, shape it can take just a minute see a distribution can be any shape the most important is normal distribution normal distribution very very important normal distribution is very useful sometimes it can be right skewed it can be left skewed it can be double peak etc when you have two processes mixing in one data two process data is in one tape one column so when you do that you will get a double peak histogram you will get sometimes you will get right uh, right skewed distribution chi square and f distribution looks like this sometimes it will be left skewed distribution etc so any any type of distribution but when you get this the most useful one that's called normal distribution now let's understand some properties of normal distribution so as i said when we get the bell shape we call it normal distribution normal distribution has certain characteristics these characteristics are useful to analyze the process under study for inferential it is very useful this kind of distribution and normal distribution can be described by knowing uh, like mean and standard deviation now suppose we have three processes process a mean is 50 standard deviation is uh, 7 process b mean is 50 standard deviation is 4 Process C mean is 50, standard deviation is 1. Can you tell me which process is better here? Any idea which process is better? Which is more precise process? So standard deviation one process. So one standard deviation maybe because data might be clustered in a small region. Very good. Very good. So what is standard deviation? Range and standard deviation is measured for what? That dispersion, isn't it? The variation. So whichever standard deviation is less, variation is less. When variation is less, precision will be. When variation is less, it will be more precise or yes. less precise? More precise. More precise. Less variation, more precise. So, this process is better. So, let's see that. How does it look like? Tell me, which process is process A here? Out of 1, 2, 3, I have drawn which process represents process A? 1, 2, or 3? Three. 3. 3, isn't it? So this represents process A. And process B, so process B is two. Sir, two. two, and one is C, isn't it? This is C. So, what is that? See the standard deviation. 
How much is this? How much is this? The spread. Process A spread how much? Can you quantify it? How can you quantify? What is the best measure? Any idea? How much will be this width? This is width of process A. How much? Tell me, uh, if you can find out the width, from where can you find out? From which parameter you can find out this? From mean or standard deviation? Sir, so what was your question again? Can you repeat that, please? See, this is process A, isn't it? See, this is process A. This is process A or not? Yes. Now, this is a width of this process. See, process A is from here to here. Let me let me take a different color. This is process A, the blue one, isn't it? I'll draw once again. Now, this is process A, isn't it? Right or not? Yes, sir. Now, what is this? This is the width of the process, isn't it? This is a spread. Now, what is this spread? How can you find out this spread? Standard deviation. So, is it the spread is 7 or not? Yes. Is the spread 7? It is not 7. It is 14 but maybe. This seven spread can seven. be found out from this. This this is a function of this. This is function of a standard deviation. The spread is a function of standard deviation. We'll see what is that function. We will see it later. Similarly, you can find out the spread from the standard deviation. Spread of B. You want to find out the spread of B. This is the mean 50. And if you want to find out the spread of this, you can find out from where? From this, the standard deviation. Okay. All right. So you understood this. When standard deviation is less, the process spread is less. So this is how it looks like. Process A, process B, process B. Okay, now let's take another situation. We have three processes. Mean is 10, process A mean is 10, standard deviation is 2. Process B mean is 15, standard deviation is 2. Process C mean is 20, standard deviation is 2. Now tell me, which process is better here? Yes, any guess? Which process is better? Yes, any guess? Which process is better? Now tell me which is process A here? Is it red, green or blue? Red one. Red, maybe. 
So this is process A, isn't it? And then process B and process C. This is 10. This is uh, 15. This is 20. Yes, tell me which process is better. Any guess? Yeah. What will, what will be the width of this process? But all of them are same. The having kind of same width. Yes. So we you cannot, cannot say which, which one is better. process is better. You cannot say which process is better. Suppose this is a process required by a customer and the customer is, customer wants a specification of uh, target as 19.8. Now tell me which process is better. Will be then C will be better, isn't it? Until unless you don't know what is the target, you cannot know. Now you understood the difference between this. Here standard deviation is same. So the width is same for all the process. So process spread is same. Precision is same. But only accuracy is different. The precision is same. You remember, <laughs> you remember the shooter example where you have this kind of it was shifted from the target. Remember this? Yes. So this yes, is something sir. like this, which is good, precise process, but the process is shifted from the center. So mean will tell only what? Your accuracy. What is the best measure of process? Process best measure is standard deviation. So both mean and standard deviation, both are important. But which is difficult to achieve? Reducing the mean, uh, reducing the standard deviation is difficult to achieve, isn't it? We learned it, isn't it? Improving a precision, achieving a precision is difficult. So standard deviation talks of precision and mean talks of accuracy. Is it clear? You remember that first slide? Yes, sir. Eh? That four shooter slide? And we said B and A, shooter B and shooter C, isn't it? We had a confusion, which shooter is better? So which shooter was better? C, why? He was more precise. Precision is more difficult to achieve. Is it clear? So when you get two standards, mean and standard deviation of a process, how you can describe this process, is it clear? Yes, okay. So this is the process and uh, right. understood? Yes. Right. Now there are certain pro probability pro properties of normal distribution that I will do one thing when, when we come to that uh, next Zoom meeting and my Zoom meeting, that time I will give you more because these, these are all out of syllabus. Now let me give you the another concept called process capital. So before explaining you the process capability, let me take you, uh, uh, give you one example, a scenario. I am in Chandigarh and I is CSC in Mumbai. Suppose I want to send some packets to Mumbai Korea. So if I uh, today 10 a.m. I am going to some courier company in Chandigarh, and then I I ask them to deliver this by 2 p.m. same day. 10 a.m. I went to Chandigarh Korea a courier company, and I want that this to be delivered at 2 p.m. same day. Do you think is it possible? Yes or no? What happened? Are you there or only your number means uh, your phone number is showing? I can see some around 40 people. I, I feel only two, three people are there. Tell me. 
हेलो नो सर यस सर 10 एएम आई वेंट टू कुरियर कंपनी एंड आई आस्क देम टू डिलीवर इट बाय 2 पीएम हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू फील दैट इट इज पॉसिबल सर इट मे बी पॉसिबल इफ दे आर मतलब ट्रैवलिंग बाय एयर मींस ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन so if at all you feel that this is possible can you give me the names of that company you feel that they are capable of doing this and can you give me some names of courier company that you feel that they are capable of fedex fedex then blue dart blue dart then e cart e cart i am not are they capable I don't know. Now let's say FedEx, Blue Dart, etc. Of course. Now, what is this? What do you call this? I I am a customer, isn't it? I came to a courier company, and can we call it as customer requirement? So we can also call it as specification limit, customer specification. Now, what is my specification? I say that it should be delivered by before 2 p.m. This is my requirement, isn't it? This is my specification. Now, if I go to this FedEx, Blue Dart, etc., the most likely chances are there they cannot even they cannot deliver it by 2 p.m. They may say, "Sir, 2 p.m. is not possible. If you want to be delivered it by 10 p.m." yes we can deliver but 2 pm is not possible now what is this 10 pm now this is 2 pm is customer specification now what is this 10 pm they said now this customer specification we can also say voice of customer voc now if you call this voc what can we call it v o and can we call it as v o p voice of process yes sir so one is v o c one is v o p now why did this name comes to your mind first because this is something related to the capability capability now this is the capability so i asked if at all they are capable what are they? so you know that fedex is capable blue dart is capable now what makes them capable now here comes the process capability study now what are the things you have learned one is specification limit you have learned another one is control limit we will learn that so ability of a process what is process capability ability of a process to meet customer specification so my customer specification of below 2 pm the courier must be delivered to mumbai and there is no capable ability there is no pro capable process so if i they say this is not possible 10 pm so then what i will do i will shift my specification to 10 pm okay i said okay nobody is capable so let's say one thing let it go by 10 pm so i will shift my process cap, uh, specification so this is called specification and this is called your process voice of process and voice of customer so it can be it is useful to choose uh, which one to you choose among the best etc so many places you can use it. this process capability study so two things are important in process capability one is specification and another one is control limit voc vop you have to know what is the voice of the customer and voice of the process this is very very important thing in six sigma not only in six sigma in quality this important process capability is very very important now let us see in detail what is the specification limit what is the process limit etc now process capability is 
ability of a process to meet its customer requirement. So every process has its in own inherent ability to produce product or service depending upon what the men involved in that process, the machine used in this process, material supply to the person, method used this process. That is why the two names come to you, FedEx, Blue Dart, etc. Because they have they have capable men, machine, they have their own flights and material, etc. Method, they have softwares, etc. for that, which can which make them capable than others. So every process is, you know, the capability of the process, every process has its own inherent ability. Now this inherent ability is determined by the men, machine, and so all this five and so four and six and whatever. And this inherent ability is called expressed as voice of process. Now Similarly, output, output specific and required by the customers. Now, it has nothing to do with the inherent ability. That's why I said I just asked them to deliver it by 2 p.m. I am not bothered whether they are having capability or not. They have nothing to do with my specification, has nothing to do with the capability. Only thing when I find that my specification is not met with this customer, I may alter my specification, but I have my own requirement, isn't it? Customer specification is totally different. It has nothing to do with the process capability, the inherent ability of a process. And the output requirement is expressed as you see. So what is a capability? Capability of a process is ability to meet the customer requirement. In a simple word, it is known as VOC divided by VOP. Voice of customer divided by VOP. It is a ratio between customer specification and uh, your process specification. So let us see what is this uh, CPCPK is the two things. So it's very simple. It's specification width by process width. Now what is specification width? Specification width is upper specification width divided by lower specification width. Suppose you have a specification with some specific gravity of 40 plus minus something to something, whatever it may be. So what is the USL upper specification limit? What is the upper specification for this customer specification? 42. 42. And what is the lower specification limit for this? 38. 38. Now what is the specification width? 4. Four. Upper USL minus LSL. Now process width is expressed as UCL minus LCL, upper control limit minus lower control limit. Now what is control limit? Control limit formula is we'll see it is given as mean plus minus three standard deviation. So your mean is 50, standard deviation is equal to 2, then what is this UCL? Tell me. Fifty-two mean plus minus three into standard deviation. Fifty-six, isn't it? Fifty-six. Now, what is this here? LCL. Forty-four. Forty-four, isn't it? 
Now, what is this controlled weight? The process weight. UCL minus LCL. How much? How much? Twelve. 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 So what is this twelve? From two, how will you arrive to twelve? Is it six into two? Or is it six into standard deviation? Yes. What is UCL? What is control limit? UCL, what is control limits? Control limits are, control limits are, that means process limits are mean plus minus three standard deviation. Now that means what is UCL? UCL is equal to mean plus three standard deviation. LCL is equal to mean minus three standard deviation. Now, what is this UCL minus LCL is equal to mean plus three standard deviation minus mean minus three standard deviation. Mean, mean get cancelled, minus, minus becomes plus. So, three sigma plus three sigma, how much? Six. Six sigma. Now, have you heard this Six Sigma before? What is this Six Sigma? Now, are you getting from where this Six Sigma term called? From where this Six Sigma term came? So, something related to this. That is why this strategy is given this. Six sigma. Now six sigma means six into standard deviation. Now what is six into standard deviation? This is nothing but your process weight. Have you got it? I said process width is a function of standard deviation. Now what is that standard deviation? This width is equal to process width is equal to. 6 into standard deviation. If your standard deviation is 7, then what is this process width? How much is this? 42. 7 into 6, isn't it? 42. Clear? Is it clear? Yes, sir. So, process capability is equal to specification width by standard process width. That means UCL, UCL minus LSL divided by, so this is the formula for process bin. Now, suppose Now, what is this? USL, isn't it? And LSL. Now, what is this? Is it VOC or VOP? VOC. VOC, it is voice USL, specification limit. Now, it is VOC. Now, imagine this is again the same 40 plus minus 5. Let's take 45. So, let's see. so what is upper specification? What is this? How much is this? 45. Hmm? 45. And here? 35. 35. And now what is the dif difference between this? This width, specification width, 
10 10 10 now you have a process whose mean is 39 and standard deviation is 2.5 Now tell me, how will this process looks like? Will it look like this? Or will it look like this? Second one, green line. So second one, how many of you tell this? How many of you agree? Now, why did you say second line? Can you explain? Sir, uh, we said that the process with 6 into standard deviation. So 6 into standard deviation will be 15 and this is 10, so it will be higher than that. No? Good. Very good. Good. Now, suppose you have another process whose mean is equal to 40.5 and the standard deviation is 0 0.8. Now, which process among the two is more uh, suitable to this? Blue one. More resemble to this blue one, isn't it? This one, isn't it? So what is the standard deviation here? The process width here? 4.8. 4.8. Now suppose this is company A and this is company B. Now this is supplier. Suppose supplier. Supplier supplier A and supplier B and now you are here your company wants to select this supplier and this is your specification which supplier will you select which supplier will you select B supplier B isn't it the reason, what is the reason? Who is capable, more capable? Who is capable? B. B is capable. Is A capable? He is capable, but some of, um, um, he might give some error. Or we can say he might not deliver the product on the exact time. Now let's forget about the time. Let's only specify this this specification only the specification of the product 40 plus minus 5 let it be mm let it be specific gravity whatever it may be so here a is going to produce defects isn't it this is defects these are all defects isn't it anything crossing less than lsl anything crossing more than usl is defects or not is this defects or not but here B is not going to produce any defect. So if you say the VOC by VOP of A, process capability, CP of A, how much? Is it less than 1? Is it equal to 1? Greater than 1. Greater than 1. I am talking about A. Yes, sir. 
Yes, and one, isn't it? What is VOC? VOC is 10 divided by VOP is 15. So, is it less than one or not? What is the capability of B? VOC is, by VOP is, is it less than one? Is it equal to one or is it greater than one? Greater than one, isn't it? So, CP greater than 1 is capable, <clears throat> not yet, we will have, we have to discuss some other thing also, but we can say greater than 1 can be said as capable. Is it clear, any doubt here so far? Are you getting me or not? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, suppose same thing. Suppose we have a process capability of some customer has given a capability as one specification as 40, 40 plus minus 5. So this is capital, uh, the, this is the specification and you have four suppliers, supplier A, B, C and D. And uh, if you want to select two supplier, which supplier you will select? Yes. If you want one supplier, which supplier will you select? Supplier D. D. Supplier. Sir D. And uh, if you want to select some one more supplier, which supplier will you select? C. 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 Definitely they are rejected, isn't it? So you can use process capability study for this, okay? Selecting a supplier. Let's take the same scenario. Now tell me, same scenario, now this time you have again A and B, two suppliers, supplier and supplier B. Who is more capable? Whom will you select? Supplier A. Good supplier A. C. Now, no, B is B, who is more capable? With the graph, who is capable? A. 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 Isn't it? Now tell me if CP of A less than CP of B or CP of A greater than CP of B. Uh, it will Which be greater correct. than CPA. It should be CPA greater than CPA. CPA is greater than CPB. 
Okay. Now, why can't we calculate now? Let's see what is CP of A. CP of A is, what is upper and VOC? What is the VOC here? 45. Uh -huh. 45 minus 35 is equal to 10. Is it it? 10 divided by, what is VOP? 4.8. Four point eight. How much? Uh, four point eight five. Two point zero eight. Two point how much? Two point. How much? Two point zero eight. Zero eight. Two point zero eight. Okay, good. So CP of A is two point zero eight. Now let's calculate two CP of B. VOC by VOP. Tell me, what is the VOC here? 10. 10. 10. And what is VOP here? 2.8. 4.8. 4.8. Now, what is the CP here? Same, sir. 2.08. How is it possible then? You know which process is better here? But you know which process is better? A is better, isn't it? Yes. So here, CP has one drawback. Understood? See, if you just, if you are not drawing the graph, you are just taking the CP, will it give you a good a conclusion? No, isn't it? So CP will not say, will not say about the process center or process shift. Now here we have a better measure called CPK. So the process capability, better measure for process capability is what? CPK. Now how CPK is calculated? CPK calculation, there is CPK now this calculated taking the only one side specification. Now, how will it say? Let's see. CPK, you have to calculate two things. CP, to find out CPK, you have to calculate CPU and CPL. Now, what is the calculation for CPU? CPU is equal to US cell minus mean divided by now tell me how much divided by for cp what is that divided by cp means user minus lsl divided by ucl minus lsl Six, six, ah, six standard deviation, isn't it? Six, six sigma. So if you are taking only one side, how much we should take here? Three sigma. Very good. Three sigma. And CPL is mean minus LSL divided by three sigma. Now to find out CPK, you need to find out two calculations. CPU, CPL. Now you will see you will take minimum of CPL comma <coughs> CPU, whichever is minimum, that becomes a CPK. Now let's take the same case. What was process A? Process A is equal to mean is equal to 40 and standard deviation is equal to 0 0.8, isn't it? Now what is CPL? CPU here. What is CPU? Forty. USL is equal to forty-five. LSL 45. is equal to thirty-five. One point zero four two. Can you just tell the steps? I will have, CPU uh, is equal to CPU uh, forty-five minus forty by three into point eight. Very good. Forty-five minus forty divided by three into 
That means uh, 40 minus 35. That means mean minus, minus LSL. Mean is 40, LSL is 35, divided by 3 into 0 0.03. And how much is equal to 1.042. Now, what about process B is CPL? CPU for process B. Process B, our mean is equal to 39, isn't it? I mean, 37, isn't it? 37. And standard deviation is equal to 0 0.8. Yes. What is CPU for the process B? Forty-five is USL, USL minus what is mean? Forty-five minus thirty-nine by three into point eight. Thirty-seven, thirty-seven. Thirty-seven is the divided by point eight into three. 0.8 into 3, how much is it? 3.33. 3.33. And CPL is? Thirty-seven minus? 35. 35 divided by? 0.8 into? 3 is equal to? 0.833. 0.833. 833. Now tell me what is CPK for process A? 833. No, CPK for process A is both are same. One point zero. Okay, right. Ha, both are same. Is it one point four zero two or two point four zero? It's two, sir. Two point zero. Two point zero something, no? Two point zero. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two point. Because both are same, so you can take whichever is. So now here, what is CPK? Tell me, what is CPK for B? 0.833. Yes, 0.833. What is that? Minimum of CPL and CPU. Now here we got. CPL has 0.83 and CPU has 3.33. Now, which one you will take? Minimum. So, the real capability of process B is 0.833. And for CPK, A is 1. So, that is why we have selected this. Now, you understood? Now, what do you mean by when CP is equal to CPK? Can you say process is centered? In yes, this sir. case, CP was using it to CPK or not? Yes. And I have drawn that process A. Process A was centered or not? Yes, sir. So we have how many parameters we learned now? Today we learned CP. CP and CP and CPK, which is a better measure? CPK. Why? Because CPK also send, tells whether the process is centered or not. Hmm? Right? Yes. So these are the two process capability indices. Now let's say uh, so. So please understand, here in this equation, there is only one variable. What is that? Standard deviation is only one variable. Hence, the process capability purely depends on standard deviation. So if you want to improve the process capability, what is that you have to reduce? You have to reduce the standard deviation of a process. Understood or not? 
Yes, sir. Yes. So major weakness of CP is CP will not say whether process is centered or not. So here then you will use CPK as better measure. So CPK is minimum of USL and NSL. Now tell me, suppose CPL is equal to 0 0.833 and CPU was is equal to 3.33. Now tell me, this process is shifted towards left side or right side? Left side. Left side. CPK is equal to 0 0.833. So this process is shifted towards left side, left side, isn't it? How will you come to know? You have to see out of CPU and CPL, which is lesser. Whichever is lesser, that means process is shifted to that side. That's also a way you can find out. USL is equal to 45, LSD is equal to 36, and sigma is equal to 1.5. What is CP? So one. Correct. Forty-five minus thirty-six divided by six into divided by six into one point five zero to one, isn't it? Okay. Is it okay so far? So can you just go for the uh, Explain the previous sum again. Previous problem. It's one here. Yes, sir. I'm not going to explain it. Somebody can explain it. Yes, please. Who can explain him? Sir, we had defined the equation for this USL minus LSL upon six sigma. Mm. So we can find the capability from that. Please explain him the equation and just tell him, explain him. Yes, sir, now I understood, sir, how it works. Understood? Yes, sir. Right. So, shall I proceed next? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, just a minute. Let me give a message. Just give me a second.
Right. So I'll just show some examples of CP. Just a minute. Let's take this as an example of some specification. Now the specification varies between lower specification is 2 mm and upper specification is 4 mm. Okay. Let's say customer, uh, maybe some, let's say this, uh, this um, some product. Now customer want this specification three plus minus one mm. Three plus minus one mm means LSL how much? Two mm. And USL how much? Four. Four. For them, isn't it? So now this company wants to select one supplier. Now they have gone and taken this supplier's information. Now there are, if they have taken it in a batch and they went to day one, they have taken four suppliers, day, day two, they have taken this one supplier, like, likewise they have taken. Now they want to see whether this supplier is capable of. So you have to tell whether this supplier is capable or not. I will uh, show you in mini tab how it is done. Quality tools, parental capability analysis, normal. Now here the column is sentence, this one. Now subgroup size in days. Now tell me what was the lower specification? Two. And what was upper specification? Four. And now let's click OK. Let's see is it capable or not. Now tell me, is this process capable? Can you find anywhere CP and CPK in this graph? No, not capable. You cannot see CP and CPK in this graph? The graph is visible. It is on the right hand side. Potential within capability. It's not visible? Okay, I'm uh, it right. is shown on the sides in the table, tabular data form. Okay. Even now it's visible or not? Is it visible now? Yes, sir. So tell me what is the CP and CPK here? CP is 0 0.33. CP is 0.33 and CPK? Uh, 0 0.02. So, can you tell, is this process capable to meet the customer expectation? No. And you can see this graph, isn't it? So, if I want to draw this graph, how does it look like? This is USL and LSL, isn't it? USL is 2, LSL is 2 and USL is uh, 4 and uh, see this in the graph like this, isn't it? 
So it it looks like this, isn't it? That's how it's looking, or not? Same. If you take yeah. this LSL, LSL, and see the process, isn't it? So there are a lot of things crossing USL, isn't it? So and CP says that this process is not capable. This supplier is not capable. So, if you are the operation manager, will you select this supplier? No. No. You will reject that, isn't it? You will look for some other supplier. You say no, this is not capable. Similar way, what I happened to me, if I want to send a courier and uh, it's not capable, no courier company is capable. I will look for some others, isn't it? Now suppose if this is the only supplier available and uh, if their capable is like then customer company what say company will say okay now let's see now let's you know relax some our specification etc. This are all that's also possible in some cases. Now come here here how much error what is this PPM? PPM more than USM in a million. Suppose if you are producing 1 lakh, 10 lakh such items. So how much out of 1 million, how many pieces is expected to cross more than 4 mm? Point four seven five, point four seven five million. Not million lakhs, four seven million. Yes, point four seven five million in that case. Ah, so four point five seven five lakhs is expected to cross how much more than four mm ppm more than USL almost in a one million. This much that is called ppm parts per million. In one million, how many parts is going to be defective more than USL four lakh seventy five thousand. And how many million is rejected less than less than two p two m in one million? Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand pieces is expected to reject less than twenty thousand. Here, more than uh, less than forty four lakhs. Twenty thousand in a million. If you are producing ten lakhs, twenty thousand pieces are expected to be defective less than two pm. And here four lakh seventy five thousand. Only this much, this much area is acceptable, isn't it? The all are defective. Clear? This is the use of CPCPK, right? Yes, so we can do one thing. We can have a discussion, small doubt clearance here. Anything you want to discuss, please let me know. And five minutes we'll discuss, then we'll take a 10 minute break. And then we'll come back again at six o'clock and we'll proceed with the next concepts.
Yes, any doubt? Yes. Can we? Now, what is this data we have used now for CP and CPK? Is it continuous or discrete? Continuous data, sir. Continuous, isn't it? Continuous data. So, this CP and CPK is for what? CP and CPK is for? Continuous data. What about if we have discrete data, count data? How can you find out that process capability? It can happen or not. You have continuous data or not. Discrete data also you can have or not. Yes. So how will you find out process capability for continuous data? So we are going to see the process capability of continuous data now. So we'll come back at nine uh, so ten minutes break. So we'll be back by uh, six o'clock, isn't it? Right? Yes, sir. yes. So let's be back by six o'clock. Okay.
Okay, you are back or not? Yes, sir. Okay, so shall we proceed? Okay, so as I said, next week I will try to have a Zoom meeting. I will send the link to you next Sunday. So before that, uh, not now, you can download mini tab on Saturday because once you download mini tab, uh, it will expire 30 days trial back. Mm -hmm. So you download mini tab on Saturday so that in 30 days and Sunday we'll practice. Let me tell you once again, this is not part of this yellow level program. But still, I will try to you know, show you Minitab practically how you will use Minitab, the CP and all with a practical project based thing. Okay. So I'll try to do that next Sunday. So Saturday, you can download whoever is having laptop, they can download it from Minitab.com. I'll show you now that. It have dot com, okay. This is minitab dot com. And if you scroll down, this is the one you have to download. Free trial. Just click on free trial. It will ask you some detail. Fill that detail and trial link will come into your mailing. Okay. Do it on Saturday. Next Saturday. Coming Saturday. Not today because at least you will get another. It's a 30 days trial back. So at least uh, half of you students, if you download it, it will be good because once I split it into three men, we'll be doing we'll be doing whatever we have learned so far, we'll be learning it in a project based manner. Hmm. So I'll I'll split into teams and then we'll I'll give a task and you will do that. I'll show you and then you will show and then you will analyze and interpret the result. Hmm. Okay. Hello. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, so please download it and uh, nobody is there to remind you, you can download it on that and Sunday will come with a Zoom meeting. Right. Okay, so as I said, we have process capability for uh, process capability for count data. Okay, so let's see. Just a minute. So we learned that CP and CPK is for which data? 
this type of data continuous data okay now let's see this uh, process capability study for discrete data now i'll give you an example of a blanket manufacturing company now suppose they produce some around 5000 uh, or 50000 blankets in a day 50000 blankets in a day they are producing now if they inspect this blanket there can be many defects some defects are missing thread loose stitch etc so many different kinds of concerns or uh, mistakes are there now suppose a quality inspector inspected suppose he is inspecting some 100 blankets so one blanket if we inspect so there is a missing thread <laughs> now he is going to reject that in the same blanket you have a loose thread also so how many units rejected one unit but in one unit how many defects two defects it can happen or not now this blanket there are nine types of defects that can occur now what are the what are the defect one is weaving defects let's call wd weaving defects knitting defects stain size variation shade variation stitching lining fringes knotting clipping now a blanket can get rejected with any of these reasons now these reasons are also known as what opportunities what is this defect defect opportunities is it clear it is known as defects opportunities the blanket can go wrong with any of these defects. Understood? Now suppose we have inspected 100 units. Out of 100 units, let's say one blanket. One blanket, there was a weaving defect. There was a knitting defect. Now how many defects it is there in the blanket? two defects so total defects two and how many blankets rejected this is one blanket isn't it the unit rejected is one but in this one unit there was two defects so this is called defective and defects defective and defects now when you say defective it means the unit defects means in your defected units how many defects are there suppose if i inspect 100 units and i found that 15 units rejected and in that out of 15 units, you have around 22 defects. Are you clear with this two? Defects and units, are you clear? Yeah, I'm really, yes, uh, I'm not getting a response. Previous batches, I used to get good response. What happened to you? Hello. Uh, are you not getting or is it uh, 
Are you getting the concept? Uh, sir, me... can you explain this one more time? Yes. Let me know that if you are not getting it. <clears throat> so I gave an example of what blanket manufacturing unit. Okay. Blanket manufacturing unit. Now they make blankets. So after making blankets, there is a process of inspection or not to find out how many pieces of blankets are accepted, how many pieces of blankets are rejected. There is always an inspection. Now in that inspection, that quality inspector will see these defects. This one blanket can go defect done, can, blanket can get rejected because of any of these reasons. ये किसी भी रीजन की वजह से ये ब्लैंकेट रिजेक्ट हो सकता है ये वीविंग बेस डिफेक्ट हो सकता है निटिंग डिफेक्ट हो सकता है स्टेन हो सकता है साइज वेरिएशन इसमें से कोई भी डिफेक्ट किसी भी ब्लैंकेट में है तो वो ब्लैंकेट रिजेक्टेड गॉट इट और नॉट एनी ऑफ दिस डिफेक्ट्स आर देयर इन एनी ब्लैंकेट दैट ब्लैंकेट इज गोइंग टू बी रिजेक्टेड इज इट क्लियर नाउ now the quality inspector inspected 100 blankets out of this 100 blankets he got 15 blankets rejected 15 units 15 blankets but in this 15 blankets his total defects were around 22 is it possible or not in one blanket you can have many defects isn't it so 15 blankets got rejected but out of this 15 blankets Total defects were 22. Somebody may I me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clear? Yeah. So, suppose 100 units I inspected, out of 100 units, 15 units rejected. Now, what is the rejection percentage? Fifteen by hundred or not? Yes, sir. Now in this fifteen units, twenty-two units <laughs> defects. Now there is a term called defects per unit. It's very simple, simple thing. Yeah. Very common sense thing. No need to have much. CPCP case, of course, different. But these are all very simple. Yeah. Defects per unit. What do you mean by per? Per means very simple. Defects. Defects divided by units. So how many units? How many defects? 22. And how many units? 100. How many opportunities? How many opportunities? Nine. Nine, sir. Nine defective, nine defective nine. How many units? Hundred. So total opportunities. Nine opportunities in one unit. And we have inspected hundred blankets or hundred units. So total opportunities. Nine hundred. Nine hundred. Yes. Nine hundred. Nine hundred. And uh, you got twenty-two defects. So can you just tell me what is DPO defects per opportunities? Yes. What was DPU? Defects per unit. And what is DPO? Defects per opportunities. How much? 22 uh, upon 900. Very good. 22 upon 900. So simple. Common sense. Very simple. 
Now, then comes DPMO, defects per million opportunities. That means it is nothing but DPO into 10 raised to 6. Million means 10 raised to 6. So DPO into 10 raised to 6. That means 22 divided by 900 into 10 raised to 6. This is going to be the DPMO. That means in a million opportunities, how many defects you are going to lose. So DPMO is a measure for defects. PPM, parts per billion. This is for defective, defective units. So you have 15 defective units and 100 units inspected. So into 10 raised to 6 will become PPM. So we have an example here. Total pieces inspected how much? So in the same in the same unit, we have total unit inspected how much? 25,000, name, 2,55,040. This much unit inspected. How much total units rejected? How many units got rejected? Ten thousand nine hundred. It's visible or not? Yes, sir. So, total unit inspected. Total unit inspected is how much? How much total uh, unit inspected? 55,040, sir. Yes. And total units rejected? Uh, 10,900. So, what will be the PPM? What is the PPM? Four to seven four, not four to seven four. It is it is ten lakh ninety thousand. No, it may be there may be a difference. Just a minute. It is 42,738, isn't it? 42,748 means in a million, in 10 lakh, if you produce 10 lakh pieces, how many pieces, how many blankets will be rejected? 42,738. 42,738 pieces will be rejected with this condition. So. These are all counts, isn't it? There is no, these are all discrete data. These are all counts. That's why we say this is for discrete data. Now, this is PPM is for units rejected. Now, 10,900 units blankets rejected. In that 10,900, how many defects they have observed? one. Yes. Now, what is DPO? Defects per unit. So, 23, 194 divided by how much? 255-040. This is DPU. So, what is the DPU? 0 0.091. So, it is 0 0.091. 0 now, what is of DPO defects per opportunity? 
defects per opportunity is 23194 divided by 255040 <laughs> 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 105 defects. Isn't it? There is also a mistake. I think I have missed one zero. I see. This has to be. Yes. So this is one zero. This is correct. One zero, one double zero, one zero one, one zero five. Okay, this is the DPMO. Now tell me for a six sigma capable, what is the DPMO? For a six sigma capable process, what is the DPMO DPMO for six sigma capable process? Today in the starting slide only we have discussed or not? 3.4. 3.4. So where is 3.4 and where is 1.0? So is this a process 6 sigma capable process? No, isn't it? So these are the indices. These are the metrics that we can define, like uh, not define, we can measure using the current situations. Current situations, we can see that how much is DPMO, how much is uh, process capability, CP, CPK, etc. So, is it clear? Any doubt here? Yes. Anything? Let me know if you have any doubts, please. Sir, how did you find the defects? You just mentioned mentioned for uh, 15, uh, 15 units uh, got rejected for that 22 defects. Was uh, How did you find that? That was just I was giving an example. This is actual data. I was giving an example for that. That's a situation. But this is, an ex this is the actual data. They have produced this much, say, the total production was this. Total pieces inspected. Total production was this. And once they have, and this is a, it's not, it's it may be a one month data. In one month data, they are keep on taking this data now. So let's see. These are all actual data from the units itself. Let me see that. So it's not just, a, you know, what do you say? Uh, Intuitive data, it's actual data taken from the production. See this, got it like January this much, February this much, March in fact in January, how much David weaving defects, knitting defects, how much, stain, how much. Likewise, you know, so these are all actual data uh, got from the uh, companies for uh, taken for your uh, you know, exam. Understood? Yes, sir.
So when you uh, go to a company, you know that this uh, with companies they take regular data. Data collection is there. Quality inspection teams are there. They collect data. They inspect it. There are quality assurance activities, quality controlled activities. What other activities are there? Okay. So PPM. DPMO, DPU, all these things are important. Please understand this. DPU, DPU. Now in control chart, we will learn about a U chart. Now what is this U chart all about? U chart is a chart of TPUs. Now proportion detective P. Now there is another chart in control chart called P chart. Now what is this P chart? P chart is nothing but chart of proportion defective. How many units in different? How many uh, units rejected? How many units inspected? So ratio of this proportion rejection, and uh, we can plot a chart for that. That's called P chart. So control phase may we will learn about P chart and U chart. That is why I am stressing this point. And in control chart, there is another plot chart, X bar R chart, X bar S chart. What is this X bar and R? What is X bar? Mean. Mean. And what is range? What is R? Range. So there is a chart for mean and range. Now this is for continuous data. And then, what is this X bar S? What does it What does it mean S? S means mean and standard deviation. So there is a chart of X bar R, X bar S. So whatever we are studying in machine phase. So in control phase, we are controlling all these things. So that time I'll be coming back again. So that's why I'm stressing to you this this thing: U chart, DPU, PPM, etc. Okay. Yes, sir. So let's take a you know you will understand. So let's let's do this. So today we are going to finish here because measure phase is completed. I do not want to touch analyze phase now. So before that, next Sunday, let us utilize for doing a initiating a project, a small project up to measure phase, CP, CPK, etc. Whatever we have learned, let us do that. Okay. Ready? Yes, sir. Right. So next, uh, by next Sunday, I'll be creating a WhatsApp group, and all those who have missed here this, ask them also to join, and we will learn it practically. Okay. Right. Yes. So if you don't have any question, we can stop today. Any questions? Right. Okay then. See you next Sunday with the practical applications of whatever we have learned so far. See you then. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir.